the Lord God Almighty. Make his path God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. My love and greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is David Turner, and I want to welcome you to this week's program, The Gospel is the Power. Amen. This week, God has placed upon my heart a message named after the title of our show. The gospel is the power unto those who believe. Amen. The key verse is found in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. Apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the very power of God unto salvation for those who believe. Amen. So you see, for those who believe, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is the very power unto their lives. You see, the power does not come when we ask for it, when we beg for it, when we plead with God. The power comes the moment we believe the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, in this world, so many people are speaking the bad news. You see, there's bad news all over the world. There's also good news all over the world. It's the devil who's constantly promoting the bad news. But God Almighty, Jesus Christ, is constantly speaking the good news. Hallelujah. What is that good news? The good news unto you today is that every word and every promise in the Bible is true. The moment you believe the Bible, the word of God, it is the very power unto you this day. Amen? So how is it that we can believe and we can speak the word of God, the good news, and the Bible? We can only believe it. We can only speak it when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? You see, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we speak that word, that's when those things begin to happen. The word is manifest and becomes the life. Amen? So the power of the gospel comes from the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit that brings forth the gospel and brings it to life. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says that the word of God is God-breathed. It's the very breath of God behind the word. The breath of God is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit behind the word that makes it, Hebrews 4.12, alive and active in your life. That when you start to speak the word, it becomes activated in your life and the things begin to happen. Amen. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 24 and 25, it says that all the flesh, man, is like the grass, and man's glory is like the, the flowers in the field. The grass will wither and die, and the flowers will fall and fade away, but it's the word of God that will stand forever. Amen? What does that mean? It means that 
Those who don't believe, they are going to fade away. But those who believe the word of God, the true gospel is the power unto their life that will allow them to live forever, eternal life in heaven, amen. So why is it that we should believe the gospel, believe the word of God? Book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, it says, he wore a robe dipped in blood and his name is word of God. So Jesus Christ, he shed his innocent blood on the cross at Calvary. He died on the cross and he rose on the third day, his resurrection, and then ascended into heaven. The moment we begin to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is the very power unto your life. Amen? Book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus Christ, he became sin for you. His blood is what sets us free when he shed his blood. So we see in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, how do we get the Holy Spirit? When we lift up the name of Jesus, we speak the pure word of God, the Holy Spirit comes. Because that verse tells us, it says that the job of the Holy Spirit is to lift up the name of Jesus. You may see in my messages, I don't tell a lot of funny jokes. I don't tell antidotes and stories. It's because that is food, possibly for a few minutes for your soul. But when I speak the word of God, it is food for your spirit. When we lift up the name of Jesus, when we speak the pure word of God, the Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will give you, John chapter 3, verse 34, anointing without the measure. What happens when you get the anointing without the measure? Isaiah 10, verse 27, it's that anointing that will break the yoke. When the anointing breaks the yoke, then what happens? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen? So this is what God is expecting when he sends us out to share the good news of the gospel. We lift up the name of Jesus. We speak the pure word of God. The Holy Spirit comes. When he comes, he will give us the anointing without measure. The anointing without measure goes forth, breaks the yoke in people's lives, and sets them in freedom. People wonder when I pray, why are we seeing the deliverance and the healing? This is why, because the spirit of the Lord is going forth, breaking the yoke by the anointing he's placed in my life and the freedom by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ is coming in the lives of the people. This child of God is the power of the gospel that is available unto you this day. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's look at Peter. He's a perfect example of this in the Bible. Peter, Luke chapter five, verse eight, it says he was a sinner an uneducated fisherman. But what happened? He says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, when you speak, speak the very oracle of God. Because he spoke the oracle of God, what happened? We see in the book of Acts, you know I've shared this several times, we've talked about Peter. Book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to 41, he was able to speak the oracle of God. One message, 3,000 people are saved. Book of Acts chapter three, verse one to eight. Peter saw the man, the crippled man at the gate, beautiful. He reached out to him and said, silver and gold I have not. What I have I give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The man went leaping and jumping and praising God because he had the power of the gospel, the Holy Spirit within his life. Amen? He lifted up Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit gave this man the good news and it translated into the natural blessing, the healing in his life and he was able to go and glorify Jesus Christ. We are called Isaiah 43, 7, you know it, for the glory of God. Amen? Hallelujah. We see Peter, Acts chapter 5, verse 15, even his shadow healed the sick. Acts chapter 9, verse 32 to 40, he said, Jesus Christ is healing you to the crippled man, and the man rose up, and Jesus' name was glorified. The gospel was spread throughout the area. We see the woman whose name was Dorcas, and he raised her from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ by the resurrection power, Romans 8, 11, Romans 6, verse 4. In the name of Jesus Christ, she was able to rise up, and it brought the glory to Jesus Christ. This is the power of the gospel. I tell you, precious people of God, that as long as you believe the gospel, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the power 
unto your life. Amen? So many people are inundated. They're getting overwhelmed like a tsunami with the bad news from everywhere they turn, everywhere they look. Maybe you've got the bad news in your life. King David said, Psalm 112, verse 6 and 7, when I get the bad news, I don't fear. I put my trust in God. This day, maybe you've gotten the bad news in your family, sickness, or in your health, or with financial issues, or with your job. Whatever the situation Don't look unto the bad news, but put your trust in God. The good news I bring to you today is that the Bible says, Proverbs 25, 25, as cold water is to a weary soul, is good news from a faraway country. That faraway country is heaven. And the good news unto you today is that Jesus Christ came. He came to remove your heavy burdens from your life. We must constantly speak the good news and build up the lives of the people. The good news unto you today is that Jesus Christ came. Matthew 11, verse 28, he said, Come, all who are heavy laden, all who are burdened, I will give you rest. Child of God, whatever you're going through today, the good news for you, the hope for you to hold on to, is that Romans 5, 5, hope in Jesus will not disappoint. Jesus Christ wants to bring you the rest and the peace into your life today. Let's meditate today upon the word of our God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. For when we do, it is the very power unto our lives. We see The very first word of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 15. John the Baptist is out at the Jordan. He's baptizing the people in the water, giving them a baptism of repentance from their sin. This is the time that Jesus comes to John the Baptist and says to him, asks him to baptize him. And John the Baptist says, it's not I who should be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. But Jesus Christ answered him and said, so that all righteousness might be fulfilled, let it be done. You see, precious people of God, Jesus wants all men, all people, to believe the gospel so that they can come into everlasting life. This is the plan of God. Jesus said, so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. He wants to bring all men into right understanding with God. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Jesus had no sin, but he took the water baptism for our sake. Amen? You see, the character of God is righteous. Book of John Chapter 17, verse 25, it says that our God, Jehovah, is righteous. Book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 14. Book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 1. In both the places, it says that Jesus Christ is righteous. In the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 17, it says that the Holy Spirit is righteous. And God wants each one of us to become righteous by believing his gospel We see book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 37 to 46. So God wants to bring all men unto the right understanding. Jesus wants to bring us unto the right understanding of God. That way we will speak the right things. We will do the right things. It will be the very power unto our lives. Amen? You see... The moment we believe the gospel, it brings the blessing unto your life. Book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 29. It says that God is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. The wicked are speaking the natural word, the things of the world every day. But the righteous are speaking the word of God, and God is hearing it. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 11, book of Psalms 138, verse 6, 
Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 22, in all the places paraphrased when you see it, it says that God is hearing the wicked from afar, that he knows their thoughts. Even they curse in their heart, God knows it. He is hearing. But Jesus Christ came to bring about all the righteousness, that all righteousness might be fulfilled so that all the people may be saved and come back to him. This is also why we must believe the gospel, walk in the righteousness, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ so that all the righteousness in this generation may be filled by the people believing Jesus Christ. Amen. Book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run into it and be safe. Precious child of God, we must as the righteous, those who believe the gospel, we must come unto the strong tower whose name is Jesus Christ, run into him, and we will be safe. We must, in the times of trouble and the rough circumstances, we must cry and repent before God. And when we do and we come before him, he will forgive us and he will help us. Amen. Book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 10 to 16. There is the sinner, the man who comes to the temple, and he's crying and beating his breast and saying, oh God, I'm unworthy. I'm such a sinner. Jesus Christ said, this man is more righteous than the Pharisee who's standing next to him, and in his heart, he's thinking, thank God I'm not like this man. I give my tithe, I go to the church. Jesus justified this sinner and said that he was righteous, amen? Same way we must come and run and fall at the feet of Jesus Christ. We become righteous not by our works, but by faith in the gospel, faith in Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection, that he is the Son of God. Amen? The Bible says, Proverbs 28, verse 1, the righteous are bold like a lion. We can have the boldness not because we're so great, but because we are righteous by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. John 1, verse 29. Amen? Hallelujah. When we are bold, we can come, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, we can come boldly before his throne of grace and mercy. Hallelujah. What a blessing unto our lives. Amen. So the blessing is when we believe the gospel. What is the earthly reward that we are getting when we believe the gospel, when we become righteous? The Bible says in Psalm chapter 5, verse 12, that there is blessing all around the righteous. When you become the righteous one of the Lord, blessing will follow you. Psalm 23, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33, it says that there will be blessing over your dwelling place. Proverbs 10, verse 6, there will be blessing over the head of the righteous. Psalm 92, verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Proverbs 24, verse 16, even a righteous man fall down seven times, he will rise up. Maybe you keep falling down in your life, but as the righteous one of the Lord, he will raise you up. And when you don't quit, you will receive the victory from your God, who's Jehovah Nissi. Amen? Psalm 34, verse 19, it says, the afflictions of the righteous are many, but God will deliver from them all. When you are the righteous one of the Lord, even you have the affliction in your life, but Jesus will deliver you. He will help you. He will set you free. Amen? So these are the blessings that we get when we walk in the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also not only get the earthly reward, but we get the heavenly blessing. Book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 3, it says, He who wins souls is wise. He will shine like the stars in the heaven. Book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 43, it says, The righteous shall shine forth as suns in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So we see, again, the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 15 to 17, we see that Jesus Christ he took the water baptism. When he did, the heavens were open. And God spoke and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. 
I want to tell you today, precious child of God, when we are walking in the sin, we are not obeying God, and we do not believe the gospel, what happens is the heavens are like a brass. Book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 23, it is shut up above our heads. God is not hearing our prayers. But the moment in your life that you repent of your sin, that you believe the gospel, that you look under the cross of Jesus Christ and believe his sacrifice and his resurrection, the moment you take the water baptism, the heavens will be open unto you the same way it opened over the beloved Son of God, Jesus Christ. And God will now begin to hear your prayers. Amen? The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, the moment we take the water baptism, that it will bring the pure consciousness in your life. We see in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, it says that when we believe Jesus and the gospel and we take the water baptism, that sin no longer will have a hold over you. You will be free from that sin. Those chains will be broken off of your life. Romans chapter 6, verse 8, it says that if we die with Jesus Christ, then we will live in him. You are 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you will become a new creation in Jesus Christ. The old passes away, the new has come. From now on, you are a child of the son and daughters of the most high God. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 14, sin will no longer have dominion over your life. And in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 13, now you will become an instrument of righteousness in the hand of the Lord, amen? Hallelujah. Book of Romans chapter six, verse 18 to 22, you will see that it says that we will become an instrument of righteousness. We will become a slave to the righteousness. We will become a slave to the holiness of God. We will become a slave to God himself. It's such a wonderful thing. It's not a curse, it's a blessing. And you will be a slave unto God, unto holiness and righteousness, and not a slave unto the works of the devil and the devil himself. Amen? Precious people of God, I want you to understand today, the moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is the very power unto your life. It is the power to set you free from addiction. It is the power to set you free from the works of the enemy that is holding you down. It is the power in your life for you to believe. It is the power to the abundant life. And that's not always finances and riches, but God wants to give you all these things as you seek first his kingdom. It is the power to the peace in your life. It is the power that will open up all the things in your life. I encourage you today, precious child of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ is simply this. Jesus Christ, the son of God, born in the flesh, died on the cross, rose from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven after 40 days walking the earth. He sits at the right hand of God the Father. This is the good news unto your life. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today, precious child of God, believe the gospel, get the power. Lord Jesus Christ, God, we come before you right now boldly as the righteous ones of the sons and daughters of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come in confidence, not in the weakness and insecurity of our lack of knowledge, lack of prayer, lack of understanding, lack of faith. We come in the boldness declaring that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus Christ was born for us, died for us, rose again and sits by the throne of God and is seeking the righteousness of God on our behalf. We come boldly believing that we are the righteous, pleading the blood of Jesus over our lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, according to the boldness, we come boldly like the righteous like a lion in the name of Jesus before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord Jesus, believing right now 
For those who don't know you but have heard this word today, God, as we repent in our hearts, every person, you are the God, even the way you saw in Luke 18, the heart of the one who was not repenting, even he wasn't speaking out loud, but you saw the heart of his judgment. But the same way you see our heart of repentance right now, every person who is falling on their knees and repenting before you right now and saying, oh God, I'm unworthy, I'm unrighteous, but I want your righteousness by faith, Jesus Christ in you, the Son of God, the name above all names, the one who died to forgive me and secure my salvation. In the name of Jesus, I believe right now and I receive my eternal life. In the name of Jesus, every person thinking this in their heart right now you are right now a child of God and come into the kingdom of the everlasting father in the name of Jesus Christ oh God every person believing that the gospel is the power believing for their healing that your word says Exodus 15 26 that you are the healer Jehovah Rapha in the name of Jesus Christ I speak the healing over their lives right now the blood of Jesus the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit resurrection power flow right now fire anointing of God flow right now peace of God flow right now blessing of God flow right now I break every curse in their life I break every stronghold right now in the name of Jesus every fear worry anxiety get out in the name of Jesus Christ right now I bring the blessing into their life God they are the righteous of the Lord according to your word your blessing your hand must be over their dwelling place your hand of the Lord the Spirit of the Lord must be over their head the Spirit of the Lord and your blessing must be upon them raise them up bless them let them flourish like the palm tree let them rise up seven times even they fall down in the name of Jesus Christ the righteousness of God the righteousness of God be upon their life, their consciousness. No more they think I am a failure, but from this day they think I am a son and daughter of the kingdom of God. That righteousness will prevail in my life. I will walk in the strength, the boldness, the confidence of my God and King whose name is Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, right now on their house, on their children, on their marriages, pour out, pour out, pour out the blessing in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of God come in their lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare Claire, from this day, immediate blessing, immediate healing. I call it into their lives. You, the devil, depart from their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. All the days of their lives, they walk in the peace and the victory and the healing and the love and the blessing of the righteousness of Jesus Christ because of his death, his resurrection, his ascension. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for who we are in you. We say, bless the name of the Lord, God Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know you can feel that power of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of God coming right into your home. Child of God, believe the gospel. It is very real. It is very tangible. You can walk in the miracles the signs and wonders in the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel. It'll be the power unto your life. We'll see you next week on The Gospel is the Power. Big is